Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Five Fact Friday. I have some really awesome questions for everybody, and I hope I can get through them without losing too much light. I had this whole plan that I was gonna film outside, and then I went outside, and I canceled those plans. So, here are some submission Five Fact Friday questions. And I say it every week, someone even put it in the comments, Oh, you say you love the questions. I really do. And right this week, I really love these questions. Um, and stay tuned. Sometimes after this video, um, I did a makeup review of like the products on my face. So you can look forward to that if you are so inclined to enjoy that kind of material. <clears throat> Here we go. So I got this one on Snapchat. Um, how do you manage your time considering you don't drive? And that's all the question said, but sometimes it's hard on Snapchat. You're only given that one line to type. So I'm gonna interpret this question and I feel like it means, I feel like this question means like, how do you budget your time when you're gonna get places, especially considering you don't drive, et cetera, et cetera. So I take public transportation in Philadelphia. It is like pretty reliable. But I usually leave a little bit earlier than I need to. Especially for me and like other city dwellers. I don't live necessarily too close to Center City where a lot of stuff is going on. So I normally leave early to things so I can get a lot of errands done, especially if I have to be in an area. Like, um, for a while though, I used to be very late to everything. I was really late to everything all the time and not necessarily school but definitely work like got in trouble was late all the time and one of the ways that I really fixed that problem was buying a watch and I know a lot of people say like oh there's a clock on your phone but I would do this thing where I like wouldn't check it because I was scared so just having a wristwatch really helped me like budget my time really well and in the summer like spring summer fall I also ride my bike a lot of places and riding my bike is such a big help when I'm trying to budget my time because like when I used to commute to my job in Center City, it takes me about 10 minutes to walk to the train, 10 minutes to wait for the train, 10 minutes for the train to take me where I'm going, but riding my bike into Center City would take under 10 minutes total. So unless it was like pouring rain or it was freezing outside or I had a flat tire, I would normally take my bike into the city, which allows me so much more time. And the only th obstacle you really run into with that is bike parking, which sometimes can take you like maybe 10 minutes to find a good spot or a spot you're comfortable leaving your bike for a long time. Other than that, because I don't drive, um, my boyfriend does drive. So... If I know that there are places that we normally go during the week, like every Sunday we go food shopping. If I know that there's a place along the way that I've been meaning to go to, sometimes I'll bring that up too, just to like get everything done in one trip. So I think I budget my time really well since I don't drive. Um, I moved to Philadelphia, like one of the reasons I moved to Philadelphia was so I didn't have to drive and so I could take public transportation. and. Most of the time, it's pretty reliable. I say that you can live pretty well by public transportation as long as you take the earlier bus or the earlier train or do something else in the area once you get there. So, have you ever struggled with body image? What role do you think the media plays in this? So, I would say... I don't struggle with this as much as I did when I was a lot younger and not like baby young but like teenager young and me right now 25 years old I don't struggle with a lot of body image issues but I would say one of the biggest things I guess is um boobs like I feel like in the media you see these like great big boobies and they're everywhere and they're what everyone's talking about and they're the focus of every picture and 
I remember there was this ad for Modern Family that used to run like on the subway and on the buses and it was just the picture of the mom and she had these big boobs pushed together and they, the line of her cleavage just went like all the way down the ad and it was like Modern Family. I remember thinking like that's your advertisement? Big boobs? These big old boobs? And you know you wonder why your body doesn't look a certain way and you kind of hope that like oh I'll continue to develop but you know I'm 25 and nothing else is really gonna change with the way I look and there are plenty of times that I wish that I had even even small boobs even a B cup and that's something that I have to learn to kind of like, it's always going to be there, but I have to kind of like, I don't know, make it funny. But there are still some times where it really upsets me, like there are just a ton of clothes I don't fit into. When I was looking for prom dresses, there were no prom dresses that weren't like all about the cleavage. And I remember the prom dress I did end up buying was cut kind of like this and then spaghetti strapped up. And I wish they would have had like some sort of halter, like come to the neck, like this part wasn't really important. But I remember buying, like looking for prom dresses and just like wanting to go home every time we left the house to look at prom dresses. And my prom dress was like my birthday present that year. So my grandma was like, get, pick something, get up, you gotta pick something. And I picked this like little gold dress, but I, it was just like bored, just like a no, just flat. And I was embarrassed and I didn't enjoy my prom. I never had fun. I didn't feel confident in my own skin. I didn't feel confident in this dress, my birthday present. And I did not spend the whole night at prom. I did go home early. And that's something I struggled with for a really long time. And I remember my mom was never on the opposition either but I can't really blame her I think that it's really romanticized these like plastic surgery shows and plastic surgery dramas and all these reality TV shows where people say breast implant breast implant like left and right so when I was growing up instead of being my mom kind of being like hey you know you're beautiful in your own skin you just said to find what works for you fuck that dress anyway it was ugly why would you pick gold my mom was always just like one day you'll have enough money and you can get breast implants and i remember like thinking that just like okay one day i can buy myself a decent set and stop feeling this way so i always just kind of told myself that success would give me more options and like being successful and having a lot of money would be able to warrant getting breast implants and I never really took the time to like appreciate what I had and you know I wanted a nose job too and again my mom was like one day you'll be able to afford a nose job you'll go to college and you'll graduate and just you'll have all this money for these amenities and never like take a look at yourself you're healthy you're alive hooray so, I would say, like, these huge insecurities were really hard for me when I was dating, and, like, I wouldn't go to the beach, I didn't want to go shopping with people, because I was just, like, I have no fucking boobs. And you, sometimes you meet people who love their bodies, and they're like, yeah, he was checking out my knockers, and you're just like, I can't relate. I don't have any experience like that, but go on. But as I got older, like, it didn't really matter. And those insecurities, like, those memories of my insecurities are still alive. And it's still terrible when I have to go to Victoria's Secret. And I have to go to Victoria's Secret because no one else sells a 32A. And unless I want, like monkeys and banana print and like flamingo print bras and I don't I just want grandma bras but for babies 
So I would say that the media had a huge influence on the development of my insecurities, but it also had a lot to do with my environment. Like, I've mentioned it before, I went to a high school where there was a huge class divide, and there was a girl in my Latin class who had a chin job, a nose job, and a boob job in high school. And you sit next to her and you wonder, like, when the fuck is my mom getting me a new chin? But I would say a lot of that, a lot of kind of shaking that feeling came with age and came with developing love for other parts of my body. And then after you start to love certain parts, you start to love the entire thing. And my tattoos, I say it all the time, they play a huge role in my confidence. So I'm happy to have them. And, you know, I can look in the mirror without clothes on and not necessarily see a little boy standing in front of me, but my tattoos are feminine and my tattoos can make me feel sexy if I want and they make me feel confident. So my body insecurities exist, but right now they're a little more muted. Let's see what it's like picking out other dresses in my life where I need cleavage to make the dress work. And I definitely don't have an issue with people who do get plastic surgery. I think it's great and still most of the time want it. I don't know. I, I don't know. So here's this one. How did Five Fact Friday come to be? Was it something you came up with or did you grow on an existing idea? And if someone were to steal the title and idea and use their content, use as their own content, would you feel robbed of your channel? So I love this question because I love Five Fact Friday. Um, Five Fact Friday came to me after a lot of Q&A that I was receiving on my channel. And I think that Q&A videos are great and I always tend to watch them like on other YouTube channels. So. I wanted to create a way where I could interact with people and have a really steady Q&A because I feel like if I was posting regular videos like makeup video or spend the day with me video, I would still get a ton of questions about, you know, my body modification procedures, my tattoos, um, school, Philly, like I was getting a ton of questions and I think that it's really exciting and engaging. And I wanted to open up that dialogue. I mean, my experience comes from Tumblr where anyone can just throw a question at you and you can choose to engage it and it becomes content. It becomes a part of your page and it becomes a post and people can reblog asks now. And I think it's great. And there used to be those late nights on Tumblr. Let me know if you're with me where people would start like these ask kind of posts like, um, you know, ask me any question in the next 10 minutes and I'll answer it no matter what, stuff like that. So that is kind of my background with social media and I wanted to incorporate it into my channel as well. It just started to happen on Friday. Um, I thought five was a solid question and I think the very first five pack Friday is like 15 minutes long. I think that I answered like a couple one word questions. And then the next week got a little more engaging. And then the week after that, it was, I don't know, it turned into a half hour. And it got positive reviews, like people were into it. Um, some people weren't. So there are some times when I try to speed things up. And that's where Tats Tattoo Talk Tuesday really came into play. I'm not saying it's necessarily that much shorter. Uh, I think it was like 15 minutes last week, but um, that's kind of how that all developed and where it came from. In the beginning, my YouTube didn't have a schedule, and I would say it still doesn't because my banner just says daily content, which is something I've really been nailing lately. Woo! So I wanted to establish some sort of schedule for myself and for viewers. And because it all happens on Friday, people can know to submit questions like Wednesday, Thursday and 
that way content is always happening and we're always engaging with each other and I just feel really connected with you guys and I think it is the best way for me and you to correspond with each other and I can feel out what kind of content people are looking for and Five Fact Friday is just a way to like answer questions and communicate with you guys as directly as possible and I think this is a really great way. Five Fact Friday, you know, I, I don't know how many episodes of Five Fact Friday they are by now, but it started off pretty small. Like the first episode I made it my own questions, I feel like. And now it's at a point where I have so many questions for every week that it takes me until like three o'clock to start filming. And I used to film Five Fact Friday at like 9 a.m. Um, and it's so long that sometimes it won't even process and upload until like 11 o'clock at night. If someone else took Five Fact Friday, I don't, I think it would be kind of weak. I think that like, as YouTube creators, it's important for us to come up with content that's unique. And not saying that I didn't do like the fall tag and I do like beauty reviews and I'm doing Vlogmas, all that stuff. But like, Tattoo Talk Tuesday, Five Fact Friday, Public Record, these are all things that are unique to the Quicken channel. And I would just encourage other creators to come up with something that is direct and unique to your audience and unique to your channel as well. Because I just feel like Five Fact Friday worked really well for my channel because people are coming in from all over and they're like, what's this chick all about? Like, what's a veganism all about? Like, lots of questions. And if you feel like you have a channel that has like a ton of question feedback, then, you know, a weekly Five Fact Friday, you know, a weekly thing might be good for you. But if you just get questions sometimes, like I think Q&A videos are really helpful. Um, I just recently got tagged to do the TMI tag video and I think that that should be a lot of fun. Um, if someone came out and they posted a Five Fact Friday, obviously it would be a direct ripoff from my channel. And not saying that I like slave over my channel and I work so hard and I'm up all night and oh it's ruining my family and I don't wanna like but I think my channel is unique and I think that I work to create content for people and if someone wants to steal that from me then I just think that's kind of weak. Run with the concept. I feel like all of us all YouTube creators should have like a Q&A sometimes because how else would you react with the people who are your audience and who make your channel what it could be? Like, I think that I'm blessed to have Five Fact Friday and have a way to have direct dialogue with people. So would the idea rob make you feel robbed of your channel? Yeah, I feel like that would be a direct rip off of an idea that I created to engage with my audience and kind of give them what they needed. But everyone has different audiences and like, I'll talk to people like, I'll talk to like Livia and she'll be like, yeah, I love this channel except for when she has like talk videos and I skip them. So everyone has different wants and needs from like their influencers and I just think that my channel is like very, um, like really dialogue heavy. So yeah, everybody, everyone's channel has different needs. And my channel really benefited from having like a back and forth. Hey. What's your favorite thing about cosmetology school? Cheap haircuts. Cheap haircuts? What about friendship? That's what I was going to say. You made some cool friends, yeah. Some super cool friends. I went from zero to hero, just like that. You had friends before that. Right? <laughs>
Don't walk by. Don't walk by. <laughs> you know, all right, hold on. If someone were to steal the title and idea and use it as their own, would you feel robbed? Yeah, no shit. Oh, okay. But if they did, like, a, I don't know how else you'd name Five Back Friday, though. I know. John came up with the name for Tattoo Talk Tuesday. Tattoo's Day? Tattoo's Day. Oh my god, I didn't eat either. That totally brownie was the first thing I ate. Totally skips through. I mean, it makes my stomach feel weird when I don't eat. I have one last question. It's pretty good. Do you want to sit in on it? I'll be over here. No one can hear you. I'll talk up. No one can see you. No one can see you where you are. Are you going to stand there the whole... Is that okay? Do you want me to get you a little chair? Shut up. Okay. Oh, get that little step stool from the bathroom. You can sit on there. Okay. If you could give to a charity of your choice, what would it be and why? Um, so I'm not super familiar with like different charities, but yeah, when- I was I gonna say, I'd have to do some research first. Yeah, so I guess, Instead of a charity, I guess I would give to, like, a thing that I understand. And when I read that question, the first thing that came to mind was, like, um, like food banks or, like, women's shelters. And so I think food banks are really great. And when I first moved out and even, like, when I moved back in, like, being able to access a food bank just to get necessities. And food banks, like... You don't just walk in and like pull all the cans off the shelf like when you go to a food bank they ask like what your income is and what kind of needs you need and like what kind of things aren't being met like in your household so the first time i ever went to a food bank i went with my first roommate and we had we grabbed like three or four boxes of cereal a thing of peanut butter a couple canned goods something like that Something that may cost, like, about $20 in a grocery store, but a can of, like, a thing of peanut butter, like, really establishes you, and I feel like is an essential part of your cabinet, and it's a great source of protein. And the first food bank I ever went to was a man, and he had a shed in his backyard, but it was, like, a nice shed, like, one that I'm sure someone could live in, like, it was heated, leak-proof insulated but he just had a shed in his backyard and he had a sign where you could drop off food or like between certain hours you could come and get food and that was just like a man and his shed and I remember all the times it was really helpful to us like my first roommate had a baby so we would get Cheerios like babies like live for Cheerios for some reason and different things like that just when it's like a little close to the end of your paycheck things like that to really help you out and even when I moved to West Philly there was a church there was a church a couple blocks away where the Trader Joe's would give the church like loaves of bread bunches of bananas things like that and my roommate and I would like swing by every once in a while grab a loaf of bread grab something to kind of just tide us over until the next paycheck and these were always things that were so helpful to me like if we go to a food bank it just it brought me so much comfort and so much relief because going hungry is such a scary feeling so i think that i would donate to like a food drive or like a food bank something like that i'm really unfamiliar with charities and sums of money and where money goes when you donate them to charities because you hear of like all these horror stories like oh if all the Haiti relief like only 10% of it like went to people in need like crazy things like that like that makes me scared but if I were to donate food I know that it would go to a person who needs it what do you think? I don't know maybe I don't know there's non-profits I might donate to Planned like Parenthood I think that that's a really good one. Yeah. There's shit. 
And even, like, if you couldn't donate a sum of money, you could always donate your time. Yeah. I don't know, there's all sorts of, uh, like, building projects. Like, there's, like, the Habitat for Humanity. Have you ever thought about that? No. Really? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I heard that, like, just regular people can do Habitat for Humanity. Like, people who have, like, they don't have experience in construction. Is that what makes it scary? Yeah, I don't want to for free have to deal with a bunch of people who don't know what they're doing. That's and true. Then I, I just don't, I'd rather volunteer my time for like, I don't know, like a community garden, like doing kind of stuff like that or... That's really cool. I don't know. Uh, Something... The park over here, I built uh, recycling bins before. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. But, yeah. Something like that. Or Planned Parenthood. Yeah, uh, I w- uh, time, time is the only... Uh, well, yeah, time is the only thing I really can donate, though. You know? Yeah. Yeah, the, um... I told you this, but, like, I volunteered... I did, like, all the paperwork to volunteer at Planned Parenthood to be, like, a hand holder, but it was kind of it was kind of bittersweet because they are good. They don't need anybody to do that because there are a ton of all other volunteers for the same exact thing. So I was like, man, I really want to do that. But I'm also glad that the job is being done. Would you be a handholder for Planned Parenthood? Yeah. That's awesome, John. But the one question I kind of skipped over was, like, favorite thing about cosmetology school. And I think my favorite thing so far, and I feel bad because I know people have very different experiences about cosmetology school, But so far, the influences I've gotten from, like, the friends that I've made, I feel like have really changed how I feel because before cosmetology school, like John said, like, I had friends, but they were mostly men, I feel like, like, your friends or, um, like, some friends from back home so I, that I didn't really get to see too often. And it was really cool for me to be put in an environment where many different women who all had different goals and different experiences and different backgrounds, like, all came together. Because I feel like that really influenced me and made me, like, a stronger person. But I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I don't go to cosmetology school. I know, but you've been (laughs) here since the beginning. I don't know. I, I mean, I can't answer that question at all. I have no say in the things that have in, uh, the, the your favorite part about cosmetology school, because I'm, I mean, <laughs> I like the people uh, that you became friends with. It seems like uh, a really interesting like profession. Like, it, it's an art and it's cool. I don't know. But I don't go to cosmetology school. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I graduate in 58 hours. 58 hours of school yeah, is left. Yeah, 58 hours from now. In 58 hours I graduate. <clears throat> but, are you sad to see it end? I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited for you, but... Yeah, I mean, there were some hard times. There were some crying times. Yeah. And some... Bring me a beer when you pick me up times. Yeah. <laughs> but, I don't know. I think it was all worth it. The ends justified the means. Yeah. Thanks for being there the whole time for me. No problem. It helped to have your support. Psych. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, this is Five Pack Friday. Thanks for everybody who submitted. If you feel like you submitted something and I replied to you and I was like, damn, that's a bomb-ass question, it doesn't mean I'm not going to answer it. Um, Sometimes I'll pick, like, three really long, good questions and then two shorties so the episode isn't 50 years long, like this one and all other ones. Thank you again for your continued support for Tattoo Talk Tuesday. I love it, and it's definitely going to be a continued series on here. And thanks for everybody who's into Vlogmas. I love Vlogmas. Hey, John. 
People love Vlogmas. And I think that that's perfect. I'm going to keep it going throughout the month. I don't really know the rules, but now that I've figured out my own rules, it's just quick in Vlogmas. And that's awesome. There's a bonus episode that'll be ready for you guys tomorrow. And stay tuned for the makeup review that is tonight on this makeup look. But, um, yeah, I love you guys. You can always submit in the comments below. Subscribe and stay tuned for Vlogmas for the rest of the month. Show your support for the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And, yeah, thanks again. Bye.